Did you miss busy days in the KHL? Well, they're back and now we have tons of stuff to talk about. My name is Andreas Sashenko and this is your daily KHL update. This is Moscow, set of Red Army vs. Salavati Live game. First period, Timo Hardikainen kind of carries the puck, looks back, no support, reset and scores 1-0 Salavat. Normally, Rostislav Stane doesn't have any problems with shots like that. Not on this instant, though. A little later, Nikolai Prokhorkin sets up Jakob Rilov for a shot, he's unchallenged and he scores. Rilov scores his second of the season. He missed most of September due to an injury. Feels good to be back, eh? Still in the first, this time it's Danny Markov with the shot and it goes in as well. 2-1 Red Army now. Markov was a late signing by Red Army as a free agent. That's his first goal and second point in three games. A little later, Jakob Rilov has the puck and he collides with Sergei Zinoviev. Ooh, that doesn't look good, does it? Zinoviev hit Rilov on the knee. Rilov did not return to the ice after that. In his first game in nearly a month, he played just over four minutes and got injured again. Zinoviev was tossed for the hit. That's five in a game. Second period now, Salavat on a power play. Nikita Filatov gets the puck. Dodrak scores! Filatov scores on his former team, 2-2. Filatov certainly holds a personal grudge on his first pro team, so he didn't need any extra motivation tonight. And he scored his fifth of the year. Third period now, Filatov has the puck again. Ice hard again and on the far side. Feeds him, but he can't beat Rostislav Stane. And this is gonna come back to harm him. Because a few shifts after that, Igor Grigorenko fit Nikolai Prohorkin in the slot and he netted his 8th of the year. Prohorkin is now tied for first in the league in goal scoring and Red Army gets 3 points on home ice thanks to that. With that win, Red Army is now tied for 6 in the West. I hope you beat Prohorkin in your fantasy poll, the kid is on fire. Moving on to Russia's old capital, we're in St. Petersburg where Roman Chavrika and SKA host Jakub Petruzalek and Amor. First period, SKA on our power play already. Artemi Panarin feeds Maxim Chudinov. His shot is blocked, but Panarin still finishes the play he created with the goal. 1-0 SKA. Kid is hot right now. With Kalachak out of the lineup, he may be the firepower's SKA needs. Soon after that, Kevin Dowland takes a hard shot on net. Mika Yavidin saves it with his mask and feels a little woozy after. Moreover, he asks for a break and Peter Uraman takes his place in goal for a few minutes. No luck for the kid though, captain Dmitry Kalinin scores on him just moments later and makes it 2-0 SKA, and Yavrinin makes his return to the ice. Second period now, Kevin Dalman shoots again, this time for the right win, and Vadim Shipachov tips it in, 3-0 SKA. You may feel like fast forwarding this video right now, but trust me, you don't want to do that, it gets much better starting right now. Dmitry Jarosov skates behind the net, leaves the puck for Slava Lidovchenko, and he gets one back for Amor. Still a long way to go, but at least there's hope now. Two minutes later, Artem Dubanko has the puck. He goes down, Yuzhov can cover up the puck though, and Mikhail Klimchuk pokes it in. It's just a one-goal game now, 3-2. SKA needs to catch its breath, and they call a timeout after that. Third period now, Viktor Tikhonov puts on a great move. He's in the slot, he takes a shot, he takes another shot, and no dice for him. Mika Yarvinin saves the day for Amor. Two great saves in a row. Just over 20 seconds left in regulation now. Mikhail Kusyanka has the puck. He drags it through the office in front to Jan Mursak and he scores from the doorstep. Tie game, 3 all. Amor has made a comeback, trailing by 3 midway through the second frame. They scored 3 unanswered goals to force overtime. Against SKA in St. Petersburg. What a storyline. Last minute of overtime now, Artemi Panarin shows some magic behind Amor's net, loses the pocket, but it goes straight to Viktor Tikhonov and he scores! SKA wins it in overtime, 4-3 final! Artemi Panarin is the first star of the game with a goal and two assists, but props to Amor for getting a point on the road in a dramatic fashion. They pulled off a great comeback against a team not many can do anything about in the league. We're in Zagreb, Croatia now, where Medvedchuk meets Neftihimik. First period, Nefihimik overcommits on a physical side in the offensive end. Ryan Vesey wins the puck to Curtis Foster to Shao Lenglet for a 2 on 1, and he scores! 1 0 Madvishat. That's Lenglet's first goal since game 1 of the season. Late in the period, Madvishat makes it 2 0 as Curtis Foster scores on a power play. If there's anything we learned about Madvishat so far, it's that it's not a good idea to get penalties against them. 40 seconds later, Shao Lenglet feeds Matt Allison in the slot. He goes water bottle and 3 0 Madvishat. Neftihimik scored a lot of goals in September on home ice. It's a bit ironic to see them on the other side now. And it only gets worse in the second frame as Jonathan Chichu takes a shot from a weird angle and Matt Dalton has no answer for it. 4 0 Medvedchuk now. 10 minutes later, Poston knocks it over to Hanna Pikaranin, to Matt Merle, to Chichu, and Merle tucks it in on a rebound. 5 0 Medvedchuk. This is getting out of hand and fast. 
Less than two minutes later, Igor Milovzorov beats Fedor Bilyakov for a shot. It's blocked. Patrick Bjorkstrand jumps on a breakaway and scores his first of the season. 6-0 Medvedchuk now. The Bears are just unstoppable. All systems go for him tonight. And Nifty Himmig doesn't like it. While the goal horn is still on for Bjorkstrand marker, Stanislav Romanov drops the glass with Matt Carl. Romanov was a minus three at this point already, so his frustration is understandable. If it's of any consolation, that's where it stops. 6 0 Medvedchuk is your final. Barry Brass earned his third career KHL shoutout, and he's now tied with Michael Leighton and Georgi Glashvili for first in the league. He's not in top five in save percentage, though. Surprising, isn't it? This is Prague, Czech Republic, and left meets Metalurg Magnitogorsk. The pick it up from the second as Denis Zaripov springs up for a breakaway, but he's hooked and it's gonna be a penalty shot. Is he gonna score? Come on, he can do this all day. 1 0 Magnitogorsk. Short left to that, left gets on the board as well as Justin Azaveda scores on a broken play. 1 1. Kyler Ritterwall was obviously gone for a pass to Nicholas Danielson, but it worked out just fine anyway. And just four minutes later, left scores on a power play as Toppy Yakala sends it home on a second attempt. 2 1 left. Just like Azaveda, Yakala scores his third of the year. Agnita gets a chance to even it up here as Kella O'Reilly has the puck in front of an open net, robbed by Petra Vehanen. Oh, what a save did the Finnish rep pull off on O'Reilly's shot. Unreal. Third period now, another power play for Magnitka. Mazakin shoots, it's deflected straight to Jan Kovars. He can't put it in, but Denis Zaripov does. We tied it twos. Zaripov scores his second of the night and seventh of the year. He's now tied for second best in the KHL. And now for probably the goal of the week. Petr Vrana has the puck, puts it through the legs of Evgeny Birikov, skates into the slot and scores. What a beauty! 3-2 left! That's Vrana's first of the year too. And it's definitely one of the goals he's gonna remember for years to come. Phenomenal. Check this out now. Nine seconds left on the clock. Makina pulls Koshkin for an extra attacker. Pavers wins the faceoff. Chris Lee feeds Sergei Mazakin. He shoots. Rebound. And Evgeny Timkin scores. Magnitka ties it up with just four seconds left in regulation. What a finish. One of the best games in the KHL this season for sure. Overtime now. Magnitka has a power play. Mazakin feeds Chris Lee. And he scores. Magnitka wins it in overtime. Chris Lee with the game winner and two points. And Sergei Mazakin with three assists. This is Magnitka's eighth win in a row. My kid should be pleased. If he knows what that emotion is, of course. Next stop, Yaroslavl, Russia, where Yanis Brooks and Lokomotiv host Nikko Hovinen and Metal Org Novokuznetsk. First period, Yuri Petrov has the puck. He throws it in the slot. Nikko Hovinen covers it up, and Alexey Alexionica takes down Nicholas Redlicks. Oh, but the help is on the way. Veteran Vitaly Vishnevsky doesn't like what he sees and jets down there Superman style. I'm not sure how to feel about this scrum, but I'll try to stay on Vishnevsky's good side from now on. Late in the first, now Kirill Kapustin has the puck, skates into the slot, scores? No! Kapustin beats Nico Hovinen, but misses the net. He's gonna have bad dreams about that. Second period now, still zip zip on the board, and Igor Averin lets another great chance go to waste. If you can't read lips and speak Russian, you know you were just exposed to some very colorful language. But he's gonna get his goal in overtime. There he is on the left wing, he carries the puck behind the net, still has it, slams on his brakes, moves into the slot, takes his time and finally roofs it. Lokomotiv takes three points on home ice thanks to Iberian's third of the year. Novokuznets continue their slide as they lose their 10th consecutive game after winning first two games of the season. They need to turn things around, if they know how, now would be a great time to do it. Severstal hosted Sibir tonight, and the Sibirian team got on the board first as Nikolai Limtigov opened up the score in a power play late in the opening frame. That's his second of the year, and he should be really thankful for Alexei Kopeki's assist. Second period now, Severstal cough up the puck in their own end. Alec Gubin gets a breakaway opportunity, and he doesn't miss. 2 nothing Sibir. Gubin scores his second of the year. He spent five years with Severstal. Local fans know him really well. A few minutes later, Anatoly Nikonsov gets the puck in the slot. Snapshot, and it's in! Severstal cuts Sibir's lead in half with that. Nikonsov scores his first of the year. He won Alexei Cherbanov's trophy in 2010 as the league's best rocky. Sibir restored their two-goal lead in a hurry, though, as your elector and Yunus Allen set up Ivan Lekonta for his first of the year. 3-1 Sibir. Bogdan Kisilevich scored late in the third to give Severstal hope, but that never escalated to anything. Sibir takes three points from their road trip to Chiripovets, and they're now fourth in the East. 
Rocky Igor Antropov scored his third goal of the season tonight in Metishi, but that didn't help Admiral much. Atlan answered back with goals by Maxim Majorov midway through the second stanza and Konstantin Kaitsov early in the third. Kaitsov now has five goals this year. After firing Sergei Svetlov as their head coach, Atlan has won six games out of eight, losing only to Dynamo Moscow and Akbars. And that's it for your daily KHL update. It feels good to be making long videos again, and that's how it's gonna be for the rest of this week. My name is Andreas Sachin. See you tomorrow.